John D. Rockefeller was an oil businessman born in 1839, considered one of the richest people in the world, and the history of all mankind. It is true that being such a great character, he has not left the world of admiration by some, and harsh criticism by others. The most curious thing of all is that Rockefeller was not born into a wealthy family, but made himself more than a billionaire through his business. It should be noted that his family upbringing was based on Calvinist ethics. And this consists of values of order and dedication, of which he pointed out that both a man and a woman should become prosperous by their own effort and intelligence. His mother taught him the value of work, saving money, basic living and mastery of verbal language. Rather, he learned to be a few words and use only those that were necessary. His entrepreneurial career started from a young age, beginning with one job to building one of the largest standard global oil companies today. One of the phrases he used to repeat in his interviews was this, I do not think there is any other quality so essential to the success of any person, as the quality of perseverance overcomes almost everything, even nature. Rockefeller's first rule, and one that can be applied to all areas of life, is perseverance. This means that even if a person has no talents, he could achieve anything with time, regardless of whether he succeeds or not. In doing so, this virtue is usually accompanied by passion. Perseverance is the effort to achieve your goals through your passion. Without passion, it is very difficult, because then you will not have the motivation to achieve success. Perseverance is a virtue that can even beat natural talent, because you put time, effort and dedication towards something. Therefore, you are training talent and making it grow. In other words, perseverance can create talent and strengthen it. Another quote Rockefeller used to say was, don't be afraid to give up something good for something excellent. He basically said this because he went from being an employee to being one of the greatest known entrepreneurs in history. As we well know through the education he received from his mother, which consisted of order and discipline, he managed to apply it in real life, especially in business and investment. Sometimes people are attached to it for the sure thing. Studying to have a good job or a good salary, or saving in excess, but not learning to invest it. And this is caused by the fear of losing it, and the lack of knowledge. That is why knowledge gives you the key tools to know how to master risk, and therefore, obtain higher profits. Failure is part of success, because if you learn from your mistakes you will know which direction to take, and therefore get the results you want, be it investments or personal. Anything that you think is worthwhile and can improve your life in the future. If you do, then, as Rockefeller said, don't be afraid to give up something good for something great. When he was just a child, Rockefeller already began to be interested in business and money in general. His first business was during school, where he collected stones of different shapes and painted them in various colors and then sold them to his classmates. All his profits were kept in a blue jar he called a safe. He finally managed to save a good amount of money for the time. $50. Soon after a farmer friend of his father's asked him to lend him money, which he didn't have. But young Rockefeller did just that. He lent it to his father's friend on the condition that he would pay him back at 7% annual interest. When his father's friend finally made good on the loan and repaid the money along with interest, little Rockefeller was amazed at how much money he had made ultimately concluding that money should work for him, and not himself for money. Of which the standout phrase for that story would be, don't work for money, let money work for you. To have wealth, it should not be your main objective, but the consequence of having done something before. A phrase that Rockefeller used to say was that, if your only goal in life is to be rich, you will never achieve it. The paradox of this phrase, or what he really means is that to a person who wants to be rich money will not fall from the sky and be rich overnight. So how does wealth work? Wealth comes to you when you have done something that benefits other people, either with your work, investments, products, or services. In other words, you must have done something about it before to deserve that money. In basic ways, it would be similar to the law of attraction. When you desire something, and you have a motive from which you could help more people. This objective is fulfilled. 
the money will be the consequence. So, to be a rich and abundant person you must have a goal related to helping and facilitating the lives of other people on a constant basis. This can be done through products, services and even investments. All people have an advantage over others. Therefore, we have to do something that we know how to do well and put it at the service of people. If you don't know what you are good at doing, it is better to ask people close to you or even a guide to start with would be to ask yourself this question, what is it that people in the world might need from me that I know how to do well? Then if you find the answer by relating it to several key strengths or skills you have and try to turn it into your business. Point number five is very much related to wealth itself, which Rockefeller says this. The only question with wealth is what do you do with it? This point is very important to know what it is all about. Since our protagonist based his success on discipline, especially on money management. A rich person really understands the rules of money. These are the control of income and the control of expenses, adding also the knowledge plus business and investment experience. Let's explain it in a simpler way. There are three types of profiles in society that define which social class you belong to financially regardless of how much money you currently have. Rather this category defines you by the way you think and the way you spend money. Before that, I want to remind you that Rockefeller was not born rich and built his wealth first through the knowledge passed down to him by his mother, and then by acquiring those habits and rules as his own. Without sounding rude and defining these three categories, we must first define the poor class. And this isn't because you do not have money or do not generate abundance for us today. But rather, it is a way of thinking that induces spending without the possibility of keeping a minimum percentage of your income for savings in basic accounting classes. The poor class spends its money on passive things that take money out of its pocket with little prior knowledge, not even what is an asset or an investment. On another level, we have the middle class, and this is characterized by the fact that the income of these groups is a little higher than most working people but their expenses are at the same time very high. The middle class is characterized by having large luxuries or expenses such as mortgage, credit card costs, travel, and overall outstanding bills to pay that reduce the final savings percentage. And finally, we have the wealthy class. Here there is a paradox of which it is thought that to belong to this class, you have to be like the middle class. In other words, appear to be as rich as possible. Another paradox of the rich class is that most people think that they have to have money beforehand to be rich or that the fact that a person has a lot of money wins the lottery or receives a considerable inheritance is already considered rich, which is partly true, but for a limited time. Since these lucky people, if they do not know anything about money management, will lose it quickly acquiring liabilities and bad investments that make disappear in the blink of an eye all the money obtained. One of the rules Rockefeller's mother taught her son was that he will save money and live below his means. This teaching is debatable since extreme austerity is not very advisable because then it can affect your state of mind and weaken it. You may come to believe that you do not deserve to be abundant and the fact that you can afford luxuries from time to time. So it is advisable not to be totally austere and to divide your income in a way that allows you to also enjoy a good quality of life in a financially intelligent way. The wealthy class are basically people who convert their income into assets by things that generate more money, such as investments and businesses. So their money works for them progressively. To acquire these skills you need some time and discipline. First to know how to save, and then to have more knowledge about investments and businesses. To later know how to study, differentiate, compare and invest in those profitable assets. Anyone, even with a low income, can have their income transformed into assets or, in other words, into passive income that comes independently. Whether one works or not, this income can be achieved through an automated business and investments that do not require your physical presence, but a previous study. The sixth rule defined by Rockefeller is a bit controversial because it has been taken out of context multiple times. It consists of the original phrase that Rockefeller himself said, when my shoeshine boy invests in the stock market, I sell everything. This phrase has been misinterpreted multiple times and actually to its real meaning. It refers to buying in panic and selling in euphoria. 
the story of the shoeshine boy, which Rockefeller refers to, is to sell when the people without investment knowledge invest in stocks at high prices and buy them when others sell low because of fear. Influenced by bad news, a common misinterpretation is to imply that you ignore the investment advice of a normal person who knows how to invest in stocks, when in fact what Rockefeller says in this sentence is totally different. If we analyze the original phrase, when my shoeshine boy invests in the stock market, referring to normal people without prior knowledge to investments. I don't sell. Everything means that there is euphoria and that your assets have become popular because the mass is buying. Therefore, that your assets may have risen to peak price. Then it is time to sell. Another statement Rockefeller made regarding business and investments is that he would rather earn 1% from the efforts of 100 people than 100% from his own efforts. And clearly the two incomes are not the same. We're talking about the income of a business owner with multiple employees compared to the income of an ordinary worker. Rockefeller prefers to use the effort of 100 people at 1% profit since there is the factor of time, effort and returns on capital and not simply a salary. This sentence, from my point of view, for those who do not have much knowledge, could also be misinterpreted and taken out of context, but is not what it seems. Rockefeller is referring to the fact that he would rather give work to people earning 1% of them than work himself and earn 100% of his own efforts. As we say in another sentence, Rockefeller prefers and makes his money work for himself, giving work to more people and making a profit in return or in technical terms, earning a surplus value. This effect is called leverage. Leverage has several meanings in the world of money. Either it can mean borrowing money to invest in assets, which you could not do without borrowing the money. Or it can mean benefiting from a system that works for you while saving you time and effort as you generate more money in an automated way. In Rockefeller's case, by having several employees, he would advance time and effort that he alone could never do. And therefore, by having a team of operators working for him, he can sell more and increase his sales. Although to do it like Rockefeller, you must learn skills such as leadership, which gives you the knowledge to be able to lead a team of people working for you. This virtue is mastered by the best entrepreneurs in the world. That is why they make billions of dollars every year. Because they know what people want. They know how to manage a great team of people and they know how to manage their products and services at the same time. Giving consumers what they need at an attractive price and selling a lot and in a very profitable way for the company. Leadership can be learned, although the person who wants to take that step must be quite open-minded. In order to be able to make effective changes within your mind, you have to know how to learn from mistakes and constantly learn new things. Knowing how to make good decisions is key, as your well-being depends on your own decisions. This is something Rockefeller used to say, Knowing how to make decisions and acting on them can lead to three paths. One is to make the right decision, which implies that it is positive and therefore will bring good things to you. Another is to do nothing, of which may imply that something good or something bad will happen. And finally, making a bad decision, of which failure will teach you a corresponding lesson. Having the ability to make your own decisions and think for yourself requires discipline. It involves knowing what you are doing, being aware of your actions, and therefore doing the best you can to make your situation and your environment significantly better. Being aware that you are making your own decisions and knowing that they are the right ones gives freedom. And therefore, well-being to master stability requires discipline and positive habits that lead us to make mostly good decisions, both financially and personally. Rockefeller's Rule 9 says, if you want to succeed, you must look for new ways instead of following the traditional and well-worn paths to success that everyone knows. This means doing new things and trying to go down alternative paths where most people have not yet traveled. A common example would be to finish a university degree in order to get a fairly well-paying job. It is not that this is a bad thing, but it is the path taken by most people who can afford to pay for their studies. And then try to qualify for a permanent job with a moderately high salary, Today we know that in much of the world, there are problems with job creation and that more and more machines are replacing human beings. Therefore, you have to look for legal alternatives to earn income, either through a part-time or full-time business and investments. 
At first you may get lost with so much information and changes in your way of thinking. Although it should not be a problem for people who think similarly to the rich, since they focus on generating value through their products, services and investments, and put them at the service of people. Therefore, they know how to generate money even without money, or having invested a large amount of initial money in their project. Another paradox that occurs when one works as a salaried employee, is that Rockefeller says that a person does not have time to earn money. Specifically, he says, who works all day long has no time to earn money. Basically, we could say that time is one of the greatest assets for a person, since he can use it for his own business and study possible investments. That is why Rockefeller prefers to use leverage with his employees, so that they invest the time and effort to generate profits for the company. Therefore, apart from generating more money and employing many people, he can use his time to research new assets and invest in them. He may even have time to afford a vacation. Although Rockefeller, as we well know, was an austere person influenced by his mother and her Calvinist ethic. Calvinist ethics, or Calvinism, is an ideology created in 1534 in France by John Calvin. And this is based on God's sovereignty over all things, of which he holds that through hard work and rationalization of goods will bless them apart from extensive beliefs. Calvinists focus on preparing themselves to develop skills related to business and leadership, from activities such as handicrafts to more advanced courses, with the objective of preparing themselves to be excellent administrators and serve society with their businesses. Rockefeller is of German descent, and his family settled in the United States in 1783, after following the example of his mother. Following the Calvinist ethic, apart from starting his first business during college, selling stones of multiple colors and shapes, years later he would become an accountant for a company. He used a book he called The General Ledger, where he wrote down his day-to-day -day transactions. In time he went to Cleveland Public School, being at the same time the librarian. A few years later, he returned to the business world with a businessman named Maurice Clark, with whom he founded the company, Clark Rockefeller. During that time there was the Civil War, from which orders and sales multiplied. After gaining a lot of experience in the oil sector in 1870, he founded Standard Oil on his own. Subsequently, he created the South Improvement Company, an association that embraced the main oil generators in Ireland, reaching agreements with railroad companies to obtain important discounts for the members of the association. Although this was annulled three months later due to protests, systematically forcing his competitors to sell or partner with Rockefeller, leading to the fact that in 1878, he controlled 90% of the U.S. oil refineries. A few years later, he created the Standard Oil Trust, which was later declared an illegal monopoly by the Ohio courts in 1892, although it was later dissolved in 1899. In that same year, he established the Standard Oil Company in New Jersey, serving as chairman until 1911, when Rockefeller retired. His company was split into several corporations. He was forced by the U.S. judiciary and his net fortune, at that time estimated at about $1 billion, eventually donating almost half of his fortune to his charitable organizations, such as the Rockefeller Foundation, the Rockefeller Institute, and several others. And that's it for today. If the video really helped you, subscribe to the channel and share it your social networks so that more people can find out what are the latest trends in the world of investment and money in general. Thank you so much for watching and remember, smart work is the key to success.